Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the Laces Out podcast, our NFL podcast. But if you're watching on YouTube, you might be a little confused. The faces look strange. No, not because we've got strange faces. They just don't look quite right. Somebody's missing. Somebody's here. Different podcast hosts are here. It's crazy. It's absolute crazy. Hey, here at Cookie Cast, we like to mix it up. What can I say? We like to get other people in to do you know, free work, basically. Anyway, ignore that bit. Let's get started. Before we do get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. Drop reviews you want to drop. And, uh, yeah, share the podcast all around. If you've got an NFL fan in your life, send them this podcast. You never know. They might thank you for it. Let's get started. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast Laces Out. Recording in progress. So, it's not often that I say this, other than very often, but if you're one of our many, many, many YouTube fans, right now you're like, what? what is happening here? Because we've decided to, it's out with the old and in with the new, it's, we've taken three podcasts and merged them into one by getting... The host of the, uh, one of the hosts, sorry, of the Formula One podcast, uh, the host of the Getting Over podcast, and me, who's just a perpetual floating podcast head, all in the same place at the same time to do a different podcast. And I'm sure everybody will have already checked out the title. So, uh, stand, weirdly, standing in for Paul Williams this week. Is two other people. Now, obviously we've covered this off air. Paul has mighty shoes. He has essentially clown shoes when it comes to the podcast world of mostly sports. But, you know, he gets about. And it takes two people to fill those mighty shoes. So I drafted in. Everybody's favourite podcast host, Stuart Woodmancy from the Getting Over podcast and other such fantastic franchises as the Football Podcast and, you know, In a Pinch podcast. Uh, Stu, how are you doing this evening? I am very good, thank you. I think what it actually boils down to with Paul is that seeing as he was outed, has not been able to nail his flag to a mast for a particular team. Last week, he's gone away this week to have a long, hard think about it. Ironically, if he had taken the team that the NFL website gave him, he'd be feeling rather smug right now. But we'll get to that. (laughs) Also, the other 50% of Paul Williams' job is going to uh, one of the Formula One podcast hosts. Mark, how are you doing? Here he is. Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Big shoes to fill this week. Big shoes. I am... Is apprehensive the better way of saying scared or... Yeah. I mean, he, he does he does so much. He'll be listening to this yeah. right now thinking I'm taking the piss. Um, speaking of absolutely not taking the piss, this is a great opportunity for me to say, Mark, the Straight to the Apex podcast is absolutely one of my favourite podcasts. And and that is not me just saying it, and that is not a joke in any way, shape, or form. I am one hundred percent serious. I absolutely love it. Uh, Thank you. It just sounds like we just talk shit, the three of us. So it's nice yeah, and and, and, and that and that's the bit I like. Um, uh, yourself, James, Tony. The the chemistry is phenomenal. Um, so uh, so yeah, uh, it's now on record that I've said how much I love it. Um, Thank you. I love it nearly as much as the Getting Over podcast. See? Well, speak, speaking of which, keep your ears out, because there'll be another one down the line very shortly, won't there? Indeed. We've got it penciled in already. Um, so, we're burning daylight, which doesn't exist anymore, as you can see out the window, because the clocks have changed, which changes certain things in the NFL world, which we should start talking about. So, this is normally the bit where I go, Paul, do all the jobs. 
I've got it. And it's cool. But I'm, Paul's not Paul's here, not. so somebody has to do the jobs because I can't be seen to be doing any work. We've got it. Okay. So we need to start then with, as Mark is a brand new guest to the NFL podcast, uh, I have already done this, so now it's your turn, Mark. So we need some season-long predictions from you. Now, you are in a fantastic position going into week nine because you've got a lot of a lot of knowledge that I didn't have back in week one or two, I think it was, when, uh, when I did these. So we will start where everybody has started by predicting your Super Bowl participants, please. Okay, so I've thought long and hard about this since being asked to be on the podcast tonight. Um, I listened last week to obviously the 49ers fan predict the 49ers to be in the Super Bowl. I can't see that. I'm not going to do that. I'm fighting every edge. I want them to be in the Super Bowl. But I am going for the Kansas City Chiefs from the AFC. I think they will beat the Bills in probably the AFC title game because they own one. Obviously losing to them in the season. The NFC was tough, but I'm going for the Philadelphia Eagles. So, I was jokingly going to say, nine nine weeks into the season, Mark will pick the Philadelphia Eagles and a random other team. Because at this point in time, what is happening <laughs> What is happening with the Eagles? <laughs> What is going? Surely, surely at this point in time we have to ask what is going on in Philadelphia, because Philadelphia sports teams are apparently having an absolute time of it. Um, I saw, I did see some entertaining um, Eagles stuff um, earlier this evening, where it's just like the like how they keep changing the sign each week. Like we want the Cowboys. It's like oh dear, the Cowboys have gone home now. And, uh, and there was a, the I think the last one was a it's always sunny in Philadelphia uh, kind of reference, which I thought was quite entertaining. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's an absolute uh, that's an absolute pick because at this point in time, who is going to take the Eagles down? No one in the NFC. I mean, obviously we've got McCaffrey now at the Forty Niners, and we actually, we beat the Rams again at weekend. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Uh, but we're so unpredictable, I can't back my own team. So, And like I say, the NFC is open this year, massive. So I just can't see by the Eagles. They've got such a good team. This is the point where Paul would say about the 49ers being his most hated team because of how unpredictable they are and Mark's just confirmed all of that. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have got you down for Chiefs versus Eagles. So then from that game, who would your winner be? The Chiefs. Can't bring himself to pick the Eagles. <laughs> I, I want to. I don't want the Chiefs to win, but the Holmes, Andy Reid, Super Bowl, I just, yeah, you can't look by the Chiefs. Okay, you might have, you might possibly have given a bit of a spoiler for your next I, prediction. Then. So the, the, M, the MVP from the Super Bowl? Patrick Mahomes. Okay. That is all in the book. And then finally, your league MVP from the regular season. Okay, so again, I was turning and throwing with this one. I think Josh Allen at Bill, the Bills. Okay. He's just, yeah, he's just class. And I think the Bills will go to the playoffs and get knocked out and he'll be season MVP. Okay, that is in the book. I should specify this far through the season. There is absolutely no prize for this. And I'm pretty sure that you only get half points for it being uh, this far through. So, uh, <laughs> so well done. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, from here then, I'm assuming you'd like to go to week eight results from the predictions. If I won the week, yes. If not, then we can just skip it. <laughs> uh, no, yes. Oh. Let's, let's find out well, what happened in week eight, shall we? I know for a fact um, there was a point early on in the week where I was like pretty sure Paul picked this team to win and um, they, 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 they did not win so I remember that part of it but anyway okay. lay well, it on let's, us let's start with the uh, aforementioned Mr Williams shall we because um, Andy will be very happy to know that he is bottom of the pile this week in terms of predictions with 7 out of 15 um, had an absolutely blazing start did Paul by picking uh, the books who lost and the Jags, who also lost, which uh, you guys will know a little bit more about. Um, so that leaves the guest, which was uh, Matthew, 
and yourself, Andy. It was very close. There was one point in it. But taking the week with 10 out of 15 uh, points is Matthew. So there's a point for the guest there. So you were, you were pipped at the post. Um, the, the Bengals did you all over on Monday Night Football. No points for anyone there. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you unfortunately pitched you by one point. So that leaves the season standings as Paul on three and a half. Andy very close behind on three. Uh, but the guest catching back up a little bit with two and a half points. So it is still very much all to play for. So no pressure, eh, Mark? Yeah, no pressure at all. No, no. I like that. That's that that shows that shows a lot to me. Like like I, I was saying last week, like when we were getting into the sort of like ten out of fifteen, like a winner gets ten out of fifteen. That's where you wanna be eight or nine weeks into the season. Because we were we were all in the uh, winning the week with seven out of sixteen correct because the the league is just like what the fuck is going on right now? What is actually <laughs> happening? You know, let's let's go live to Philadelphia where you know it's stuff like that. Let's uh, let's go let's go live to uh, Tampa Bay, Green Bay. Anybody? <laughs> I said I said to the stats mistress on Sunday evening. If we could go back in time eight weeks, and I said to you that by week eight, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Green Bay Packers were on a losing streak, would you have believed me? So, uh, yeah, what is actually happening? It's it's always like, I know it was mentioned earlier on in the season about could this be like Brady's last stand? I mean, I'd very possibly stupidly took him in our fantasy league and I, it, it gets said every year like oh it's going to be his last year it's going to be his last year. even he said it let's face it but I, yeah I don't I, I, it's got to be now because surely he can't he he, can't he, he was interviewed this week and said the phrase there is no retirement in my future um, this is also uh, I was informed by the stats mistress that she did remove a line from a stat this week which said uh, Tom Brady and Giselle have confirmed that they are going to get a divorce. Because uh, up until the start of this week, there was very much... Uh, she had given him an ultimatum. Um, and I believe he gave his answer by suiting up at the weekend. So, um, on the on the subject of Tom Brady, I just want to say, standing, waiting to get out of Wembley, uh, a woman behind me obviously saw that a gentleman in front of me was wearing a Brady jersey. And all I heard from behind was Brady Pease sitting down. And at this point in time, I do think it could possibly be one of the greatest insults I've ever heard. It keep, it play, It goes through my head like, you know, a song that just gets stuck. I, like, all day, every day since then, I'm like, that's fucking. That, that is, that is brutal. <laughs> so simple and yet. Anywho, well, we've, uh, so we've gone. We've got. We've got the week eight results predictions done, but that does also leave your side bet predictions. Mm, yes, lay it on me. Okay, so this week, uh, Andy had. The Eagles, the Cowboys, the Ravens, and the Bengals, giving him three out of four. As the Eagles beat the Steelers, the Cowboys beat the Bears, and the Ravens beat the aforementioned Brady led Bucks. So, where does that leave Paul? Mm. Unfortunately for the resident rim man of the NFL and other, po- other podcasts, he did score four out of four this week. Are you kidding me? So he had the Dolphins, who beat the Lions, the Bills, who beat the Packers, the Vikings, who beat the Cardinals, and the Titans, that saw to the Texans. So for the season, that puts Paul on 23, and Andy on 17, so there is a six-point gap. I know, we're as disappointed as you, Andy, and we can say that because he's not here. So <laughs> I feel...
part of me feels like I want to go back and listen to last week's podcast. I feel something. I well, I'm, we'll, mm. we'll come to it, but obviously that will give you the choice of whether you want to go first or second in the side bet predictions a little bit later on. Um, however, Paul, not here. He can't make the picks because you do it in snake format. So this is, something, this is something I didn't know if it was going to be uh, a week where we left it out for the week. I didn't know if it was going to be one of those where, because he's not here, he gets to give all four of his picks straight off the bat. Whether he's provided eight picks, and as long as I don't pick four of them, it, it's... I didn't know how we are going to do it, but I'm sure you've got that all under control. Um, yep. Or we could stitch him up. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not touching that one. I'm not touching that one because he'll so he'll got... come he'll come for us in the night. That's what I know. Um, so predictions done. Side bet done. That can only mean checking his watch. It must be stats o'clock. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. not going down to the wire this week. Well in advance this week. The stats mistress, she provides. Um, so, NFL 2022 season, week eight stats, provided to us by the stats mistress and provided to her by Nate Davis of USA Today. They are absolutely monstrous stats this week, so everybody needs to strap themselves in because they are a <laughs> juicy. Um... The first stat looks a little something like this. The Jets, 22-17 loss to Mac Jones' Patriots, ended the Jets' four-game winning streak, which had happened largely in spite of Wilson. He completed 55% of his passes with three touchdowns, five interceptions, and a 71.0 quarterback rating in five starts this season. Sunday was the Jets' first game of 2022 without injured rookie running back Brees Hall, the real engine of their offense. Um, Something that myself and Mark will be coming very quickly to is over in London, Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence failed to live up to his number one pick billing once again. His soul-sucking interception on first and goal from the one-yard line in the second quarter was a mistake the Jags never could overcome in a 21-17 loss to the Denver Broncos. Lawrence finished with 133 yards and a pair of picks as his team dropped its fifth straight. Now then, before moving on, I read that stat earlier today. I was saying to the stats mistress, sometimes I read the stats through, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like to hear them fresh. I read that stat earlier and I felt that stat was wildly unfair. The Jags looked super dominant in that game and the Broncos looked terrible. Up to a point. Yep. We, will, we will discuss this at length shortly, but... Having just read that stat, I felt it was a bit. I felt it was fair to say that stat makes it sound a lot worse than it was. I was <sighs> rooting's not the right word, but I was quite enjoying watching the Jags on Sunday, and that's probably one of the first times you'll ever hear me say that. It's. We'll come to it later. There's more stats to go through, and weirdly. Stat number three is a Broncos stat. Or is it? Broncos running back Latavius Murray rushed for the game-winning touchdown at Wembley Stadium four weeks after scoring in Tottenham Stadium as a member of the New Orleans Saints. He became the first player to run for touchdowns in London while with different teams in the same season. I thought that was a fantastic stat. 
Uh, my final stat for this week is the fourth one, and Houston Texans' Davis Mills submitted another uninspired performance in Sunday's 17-10 loss to the Tennessee Titans. After a solid rookie season, Mills increasingly looks like a player the Texans might replace atop the 2023 draft. Uh, I believe we're over to you, Stu, for more stat goodness. Indeed, and sticking with that same game, it was a monumental Sunday for Titans running back Derek Henry, who scored his 75th career touchdown. Henry rushed for 219 yards and a pair of scores in the win over Houston. His six career games with at least 200 rushing yards and multiple touchdowns are the most in the Super Bowl era since 1966, and twice as many as anyone else. I mean, he, every, sing, every single time you look at the odds on a weekend, him to be any time touchdown scorer is like, because it's just, it's nailed on almost. Mm. Um, for the eighth consecutive game, Bill's wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, holding a touchdown catch against Green Bay. In all of the other instances, he was a member of the Vikings. Yep. Uh, the Christian McCaffrey dividends are already paying off for the San Francisco 49ers with a rushing touchdown, a passing touchdown, and a receiving touchdown in a single game during Sunday's 31 14 win of a rival Los Angeles Rams. I saw a, I saw a stat about how many. Receiving, rush, rushing, and passing touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey has over other players. It was, it was like, what the hell? That's that. Surely, then, for for a player in his position, is almost like scoring like the perfect hat trick in soccer football. Mm. They're calling it the triple crown, out there, which is obviously borrowed from the motor racing world. But yeah, it's is is it only one of three players to ever do that or something? Yeah, that was that was the yeah. start. It said like each of the three mm. players that have done each yeah. of the three things. Well, speaking of uh, rushing touchdowns, the Cowboys will face an interesting dilemma at running back following this season. Playing in place of an injured starter, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, I knew I'd do that. Ezekiel Elliott on Sunday. Tony Pollard scored three touchdowns and racked up 147 yards from scrimmage. Dallas is now eight and zero when Pollard gets at least 15 touches. However, he's scheduled to hit free agency following this season. Elliott is under contract through the 2026 campaign, but could be a candidate for release in 2023, which could open the door to keep him Pollard. I saw a thing about that today, saying that the one thing that the Cowboys don't do well is if they've got like a franchise quarterback, a franchise running back, and then someone better comes along, they won't make the switch. They always double down on their franchise quarterback, their franchise running back, their franchise wide receiver. And it, it, it's just simply not the right move. If you've got a better player for that position, put the better player in. But it's always like, oh no, uh, we're going we're gonna to play Dak this week. Is that purely them not admitting they were wrong? <sighs> Stubbornness dies hard, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was the final stat from me, so it is over to you, Mark, to round us out. Okay, so I start with the Vikings. The Vikings persevered against the Cardinals for a 34-26 win, improving to 6-1 and one for only the third time in the past 22 seasons. That, that's a surprising stat. Yep. Um, only the unbeaten Philadelphia Eagles have a better record this year. I mean, for a Kirk Cousins team, that is a very surprising stat. <laughs> um, Miami Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill is making a strong push for the 2022 Offensive Player of the Year. After a 12-catch, 188-yard day in Detroit on Sunday, he's up to 961 receiving yards this season the third highest total in history through eight games. Hill already has four games with at least 150 receiving yards this season. Hill and fellow Finns wide receiver Jalen Waddle have combined for 1,688 receiving yards, the most by a pair of teammates in the Super Bowl era through eight games. With different quarterbacks as well, obviously. 
which makes it probably even more impressive. Um, running back Alvin Kamara scored three times in the Saints' 24-0 whitewash of the Las Vegas Raiders. It was his 10th career game with both a rushing and receiving touchdown, tied with McCaffrey for most ever by a player in his first six seasons. The game marked the first time the Silver and Black were shut out since a 52 nil loss to the St. Louis Rams back in November the 30th, 2014. Derek Carr was also their quarterback that day. I've had a another mini stat sent to me separately about this. Uh, it took the Raiders offensive until 3 minutes and 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter to cross midfield. I can only imagine the Raiders uh, uh, behind the scenes staff will be like, we might need to make some changes for next week. <laughs> Just a few. Like the entire team, maybe. Um, my last stat is touching on something that we've already spoke about, actually. Um, how was Tom Brady's week? Thursday, he suffered his first three game losing streak since 2002, a stretch that has spanned a record 302 consecutive starts. I can't bring myself to say TB12. I just don't like it. TB12 was also sacked for the 556th time in his career and surpassed Ben Roethlisberger for the most ever suffered in the NFL. So, again, this is one of those things that I was talking to the stats mistress about and I was saying it's one of those things that when you keep playing well into, you know, your late years and stuff, it, it's a double-edged sword because, yes, you have the opportunity to add more touchdowns, more passing yards, more whatever to your to your ever increasing stats. But you also have the opportunity to add the bad stats as well. So I'm, I think we can you know I think we can agree that Roethlisberger was notorious for getting sacked, and if Brady's now past that, it's a kind of uh, yeah you're now starting to see the bad stats coming out, which I can't imagine anybody really wants to see. Surely, surely the like, defensive line have to take a little bit of the uh, credit on that one, though, as well. Um, I, 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 when we get to talk about the Wembley game, which I do wonder, we might we might have to take a little break and then maybe talk about it next before then going on to next week. Um, I've got a lot to say about uh, like offensive lines and defensive lines and and things like that. Um, I, I week in week out say, say about particular teams there's something clearly wrong with X team and I think if you look at like the two heavy hitters that are getting hit heavily in the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers both of those teams have got serious issues somewhere and the question I imagine on a lot of people's lips is is it at the quarterback position so, um... it's strange you mentioned Green Bay because I fe- when I first started watching NFL, I used to comment on how much time Rogers had behind that offensive line. It was always the best offensive line in the game, probably up there with Dallas. But obviously, Green Bay had the quarterback. Now Rogers is getting hit left, right, and center, isn't he? Every yeah, he, single get, he week. gets sacked like nobody's business. It, it, yeah, it, it's. it's... It's painful well, to watch, it's embarrassing to watch, it's just... Something's not right. Well, let's let's take that opportunity, like Andy said. We'll have a little pause. You won't even notice. Stay right where you are, and we will be back to talk some London NFL. Recording in progress. So we're back. Told you, you blinked. You definitely missed it. But it is time for me to uh, hand over, I guess, for a short period of time to Andy and Mark as they have had the full NFL experience from start to finish uh, this past Sunday down at Wembley Stadium with the Broncos versus the Jags. So over to you, fellas. I wasn't entirely sure how to go about uh, to go about doing this. I imagine. Once we hit the game, our sort of 
thoughts and opinions may sort of converge. Um, me and my ultimate wisdom thought that it was a fantastic idea to drive to Wembley, um, which when when I was informed that the clocks changed Saturday night and we got an extra hour, I was like, this is this couldn't even be better. An extra hour in bed before driving for three and a half hours. It's just like exceptional. Um, but yeah, I, I set off at half seven in the morning and drove for 150 miles with almost no issues. It was just like, and every now and then I'd be like, well, where is everyone? Oh yeah, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Carry on. On a driving. Sunday. Yeah, on a Sunday when the clocks have changed, nobody's even out of bed. So I had a, I had a great time. Uh, unfortunately for me, the last fifty miles of my journey was uh, lots of twists and turns and roundabouts, and it was doing my tits in. And then I got to uh, I got to the tube station that I'd planned on parking at, and was like, no. No, uh, again, big shout out to the stats mistress who had done a little bit of research the night before and said, if you can't get into that tube station, there's another one nearby you can use, uh, which I did manage to get into. And then like two, uh, it was like three or four tube stops away from Wembley came out, managed to find the people that I was meeting, podcast alum Rob Rafton and, uh, and other friends and uh, managed to do that pretty easy. Um, I don't know if you found this, but phone reception was absolutely shocking. Awful. For a stadium that used to be sponsored by EE, it was absolutely god-awful. The, 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 yeah. best, the best place for reception, I found, was we went to look at the merch booth. Um, Rob had, uh, had done click and collect for merch, which we found from last time that we went, four years ago, is the absolute way to do it. Um, last time we went, you couldn't do click and collect on the day. I managed to do click and collect at the merch booth. <laughs> I was like, I want that. I want it now. I've paid for it. Here's my order number. And then I was literally next in the queue and I just went, the guy was like, yeah, cool. I'll grab that for you. Lovely. Thanks. So that, that was that. But th in this little square, just outside the merch booth, I had all the reception in the world. Anywhere else, it's like, you know, like in the 90s where you'd do that. Yeah. Just try and hold your phone higher and higher to try. It was shockingly bad. It wasn't just, it wasn't just internet either. It was actual phone, phone and text signal as well, text. wasn't it? Like, WhatsApp. Think... WhatsApp was just like, I'll see you guys later. Maybe, you know, somewhere around the outskirts of London. It's funny you should say about WhatsApp because I had a conversation with my neighbour, Stuart, about I was shocked and kind of confused why a lady in front of me and Katie had full signal because she was quite happily WhatsApping because she received a dick pic. <laughs> it's what um, you want to see, quite frankly. It's what you want to see. Yeah. Can you imagine if that if that said person just happens to stumble across a brand new NFL podcast to her? Mm. And then, <laughs> that would be I perfect, Simon. I won't mention the names because I do know her name. Um, if by any was, chance you do stumble across a certain NFL podcast, send us... Ideally, not, not, that. not the dick pic. I think I've seen it. I don't want to see it again. <laughs> no, no, no. Forever that was, about the, that was about the time that you saw me on the screen. So I was gonna, I was gonna get to this. Um, something I want to cover, and we'll cover at various points. I imagine you might have similar sort of stuff. Is some of the organisational stuff at Wembley is beyond, like, you, you, it, like insanity squared. We queued for food and drinks. I was like, I'll have a coffee. Rob was like, I'm gonna get a hot dog. I'm gonna get a beer. Here we go. They were pouring cans of beer into plastic cups. But they were doing if you walked up and said, Can I have a beer? They'd do it there and then. But sixty to seventy percent of the people that were going up were asking for beer. Why wasn't there somebody off to the side just pouring cans of beer into cups and passing them out? Where where's the where's the noodle in this? 
it, it, like some of some of the organisational stuff is beyond belief. It's... Did you go to the actual NFL, the big, the Duval Market, as it was calling it this year? Did you go to that, or did you go to the little Met shop? So, I ended up going into the market literally as I got a phone call saying where are you and they were actually behind me so as i was going in i then did a u-turn and came back out we went to a tiny little like merch cabin like round the side and we were just like well we'll just go here it's weird another sort of organizational thing was the fact of we kept asking staff where we could go and pick up merch and none of them had a clue no they didn't they couldn't tell you anything it's like if 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 you're here on game day, maybe brief your staff on where a couple of the things are. Like people at the information stand couldn't tell us where the merch was. It was like the guy was like, "I'll go and speak to her over there. She's a manager." You you stood under a sign that says information. Well, to be fair, he wasn't stood, stood under the sign that said merch. It could have been worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even the manager was a, was a bit like, I think if you go that way, you might find something. We were just like, oh, we'll just we'll just walk and see. And we eventually stumbled into the merch. In but an underground anyway. car park, which was a random, random place for it, like... We've been previous years and it's been up Wembley Way to the right in a big tent and it's been signposted. You had people with lollipops. Yeah. We walked and we could see where the food and drink was and we passed it, not thinking that it was under a massive block of flats in what is essentially their car park. Yep. Yeah. And it was 40 minutes of queue for absolutely nothing because they hardly had anything. Yeah. Yeah, when we were coming out, there was a, a merch booth that we passed and it was like they were still selling stuff but it looked like they'd been like you know bandits had turned up and taken everything because like half of it was empty so they just they just designated one half by that point they're like this is what we've got left you can have it if you like um so fast forward past the the organizational issues to the actual game one of those things that i don't know where time went but we sort of started moving towards heading inside like I think it was about an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes before kickoff. And I feel like we got to our seats like 10 minutes before the game started. It was weird. Like between people trying to get to the toilets and people us trying to get like food and drinks. By the time we got to the seats, like what? But um, I know I know you and I, Mark, spoke about like our our difference in seats and stuff. Um, and I, I, I was a bit like, I never did think to check what seats we had. Um, but when it was like row 20 and I'm like, hang on a minute, that sounds low. And we went down and it was like, wow, these are incredible seats. Um, again, big shout out to uh, to Mr. Afton. He organized the whole thing. I literally handed him a, a handful of cash months after he bought the tickets. Like, I suppose I should give you some money. Um, and at no point did I think to go, where are we sitting? <laughs> so when we rocked up and I was like, wow, because myself and Rob Rafton went, uh, four years ago to watch the Seahawks versus the Raiders at Wembley stadium. And we were in the second to last row. Yeah. Every time they scored, we were, we were high five in Zeus. It was, uh, <laughs> It was like, you see those pinheads uh, just about there? Those are actually human beings on the field. I've, I've been up there for the City playoff final, for Windass's goal, for someone that's scared of heights when he scored. I didn't move off my seat because um, we was halfway land, the very crest at the top, and we had no one behind us. And like you say, Windass and Fraser Campbell were a dot that day. Yeah. So we, I am a Yorkshireman, but I'm, I was not as tight as I was that day. So I did pay a little bit more. Yeah, I, 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 did, have a, I did have a suspicion when I was told how much the ticket was. And I was like, that's gone up. Uh, but you know, you know where the Jumbotrons are? We were behind the Jumbotron, second to last row. 
last time. Right. So we had a bit of an upgrade this time. Um, could, uh, as far as the game's concerned, obviously I alluded to it before because of the stat. I felt the stat was quite harsh. Um, it was one of those things. I was going in as a Broncos fan in, of the two teams. Um, the, the Jags have never really been that far up the totem pole for me. Um, whereas I'm, you know, very much like Paul, I don't have a specific um, team to speak of. I have my favourites, and I have my least favourites, and then there's a load of people in the middle. Um, weirdly, Broncos would be on one end of the scale and Jags would be on the other. So, kind of get the idea on that one. Um, that, ga <laughs> that game started out bad. <laughs> Really bad. It was, really bad. It was the kind of game where you're like, so when the punter is the guy who's been on the field the longest, this is this is this is great. This is far and out, far and out, far and out on both sides of the ball. Um, and then the Jags seemed to get it going, and it was being there as a Broncos fan. It was simultaneously painful and, in a lot of ways, kind of entertaining to watch. Um, at the, for this season, the Broncos and the issues that they're having, especially at quarterback, um, are well known. Um, and at one point I'd said to her, I was like, ultimately, Russell Wilson doesn't stand a chance when the... The, the O-line defense side of things literally just parts when anybody's coming in. They're, they're, like, they're basically holding the door open. It, it, was, it was, in a lot of ways, painful to watch. You've got that thing that I, I said, I, I was also saying to like, people I was with, I was like, he doesn't make it easy for himself, though, because he's not exactly the first pair of boots on the field. The whole team goes out and goes into a huddle and about three minutes later, Russell Wilson saunters out and wanders over. And it's like, you're not setting an amazing example. Um, and heading towards the half, for me personally, I don't know I don't know what you thought about the game up till that point. It was like, I can't quite find the right word to describe how I was feeling about the Jags. I, I kind of, I, I guess respect was kind of where I was coming from. Um, their, their, their running back is nothing short of incredible. There was a point where yeah. they were like, pick player of the player of the match, and it was like, Russell Wilson was up there. They shoved him at the end, and everyone laughed around us. They People were, like, were really? laughing, and it was like... <laughs> the first throw was intercepted. Like you say, he looked, he looked like a rookie quarterback, absolutely out of his depth. Yeah. But... Like, see, go on, sorry, Andy. No, no, you go on. I was just going to say, cause, you know, if you didn't know anything about the game, you'd have thought he was the rookie. But like you say, he sorted on the field. He was, then he was, we was behind the dugouts on the Broncos side, and he was having a right go at his offensive lineman. Then he was having a go at his wide receivers. You've just thrown a pick that literally everyone, as soon as you let it go, was like, that's getting picked. We, he we had could, no right to throw it. We could see it. Like when he was having a go at the at the other players, and you could just see that they could not care less. No, no. They couldn't have it. given less of a shit. They were just like, "Tell you what, why don't you shut up?" It reached a point where there were, there'd been a clear change in the game, for especially from a Broncos perspective. There was a lot of quick passing. And I don't know where that change has come, whether I know there's a lot of rumours about Russell Wilson calling his own plays, whether that's come from the coaching staff as a look, you're just getting hit left, right, and centre. You're not getting the chance to do anything with the ball. So literally, one, two, three, and throw. But it started to work, and it started to work for that game. And you could obviously I'd I'd gone i I'd gone with a die hard Broncos fan. Uh, a mate of Rob, uh, he is a die-hard Broncos fan, and he'd said that you could clearly tell that although it was a Jags home game, 
there was definitely more Broncos fans there. And as that game yeah, yeah. as that game started to shift and as it started to change and started to go a little bit more in the Broncos' favour, which honestly, I'm still questioning how that happened now, but I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouse kind of thing. That crowd started getting into it. And I think that helped the team. And I think the team was a bit like well, maybe we maybe we can do something with this. Maybe we can do something about this. And it felt like there was a not not just a shift on the field, but a shift with the crowd. And the crowd was feeding into the team, and the team was feeding it back into the crowd. And you could just tell that the air had changed. I got um I don't know how it will show up, but I got an amazing photo. Um, not I'm not giving myself my my photo skills props. It's not that. <laughs> But nice. I saw. Yeah, I saw you posted that. Yeah, a, a rainbow across the top of Wembley. It wasn't even raining. <laughs> it was like, what is happening? Um, just by that sort of point, things had started to shift, and it was starting to look a lot, lot better from from Broncos side. I think some of the plays, like um, like the interception towards the back end, which would basically ended the game. Um, it was you know you were out of your seat you were cheering you were behind them you know not you could see by the different team jerseys around you that not everybody was there for the Broncos not everybody was there for the Jags but you could also see that people had got into it um, which, which, which jersey did you go wearing Mark? I went with my red 49ers Garoppolo one Oh man, Matt, Matt will. I really hope uh, podcast. Uh, I love Matt Moore is listening to this because he would love the fact that you've got a Jimmy G <laughs> a jersey. Oh, yeah, I've got this one. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny you should say about Wilson because I think that, like you say, something snapped in him and changed, and they changed the whole gameplay. And like the first half, R- Wilson was renowned in Seattle for running. He was that guy, wasn't he? He yeah. was running, he could play. Yeah. And the first half, it looked like his legs had gone. And I thought, oh, maybe he's a bit too old to run now. As the game went on, he started to run a bit more. And then, and it's almost like confidence just shot through him. But I would say that, I can't remember who scored for the Jags. And then the next play, Wilson just chucked a long ball to, it was a Hamler. Yeah. Um, 47 yard, absolute. Each. It was a and you thought, pearl. here we go, straight, yeah, straight, you know, wasn't it straight yeah. from like kickoff type thing, and you was like, that's Wilson, that's what I wanted to go see, yeah, that Russell Wilson, yeah, because I like well, say when I saw when I went last time, it was to see Russell Wilson quarterback in the Seahawks, and mm-hmm. it you know it was it was a great it was a great time to be seeing that team, uh, and especially to be seeing that team live. Um, by the by, the back end of that game, like I say, the inception came and the place just erupted. Um, it was a jumping jumping ahead slightly, getting out of London, getting away from like getting getting away from Wembley, getting away all of that. By the time I'd cleared a big chunk of the traffic and stuff, that question of was it worth it when I had 196 miles to go, started playing through my head because all I could think was it's going to be X number of hours before I get home. I needed to get petrol. I hadn't eaten. So I was like, maybe I can get some food and some petrol. And the further I was driving, the petrol was going down. The services were nowhere to be found. I'm like, uh, is it is it going to be one of those? You know, that kind of stuff. Playing it through and going, was it worth it? The answer was yes, because of the game. If that game had continued the way it started, I'd, I'd have definitely been questioning it a bit more. But for me, that mm. game was fantastic by the end. It, it was, for me, it was not the best game technically, but because both teams were crap, it was good. It was, it was, it the, was I mean, kind of, there is, there is, there is something to be said about live sports. <clears throat> I've been to I've been to a multitude. Um, spe- speaking of the man who's not here, I've been to a multitude of uh, football games uh, with Mr. Williams. Um, 
been all the way over over to Middlesbrough to watch Middlesbrough play. I've been to um, <clears throat> York City to watch Middlesbrough play, and you know stuff like that. It's like and football football for me, especially in you know for the last thirty years, has not been the top priority. But going and seeing it live, you get into it. You get you get invested. So going and seeing it live anyway was always going to turn turn that. You know, if I'd have been sat watching that on Red Zone. And they just saw, showed the scoring plays. You'd have been like, "Yeah, okay." You know, there was some great scoring plays from other games this weekend. So you've got that aspect. Um, have you got anything else specifically about the game to go through? Um, no, I, I thought Lawrence Lawrence's pass to Ingram for the first touchdown. I thought was an absolute peach. Mm-hmm. And like you say, I felt a bit sorry for Lawrence because his O line was non-existent. And the amount of times he had to like quickly shimmy to the right yep. to dodge players yep. literally coming for him like a bullet. He was he was oh, just drifting. Well. From where he'd start, he would just start drifting and drifting and drifting and drifting. And if he was lucky, he'd be able to get that ball off. Something mm-hmm. I noticed, and I I'm always very dubious when I watch the the, the Broncos now. I feel that the um like the referees are really hard on them, and there was there was a penalty they gave for pass interference and they re- showed a replay which you could see on the Jumbotron and I was like there is no pass interference there whatsoever no. so what have no. you where have you managed to get that from obviously speaking <laughs> speaking of the Jumbotron I'm mid conversation this way that we've got a Jumbotron here but you know that thing where it's easier to look at the one that's further away than the one that's close so I'm in a conversation here Jumbotron here as I turn away from finishing the conversation, I turn and this face appears large and in charge on the Jumbotron at this end. And I went, I think that's Mark. Yes, <laughs> now, until was. the day, I didn't even know you were going. I got a random message from you like at some point in the morning, like, are you at the game today? I was like, yes. Are you? Yes. I was like, oh, cool. I'm pretty sure you were either on the same tube as me or one in front or behind. Because yeah, at the point I you were like, so, yeah. I'm just I'm just getting on the tube. I'm like, I'm, me too. <laughs> what is happening right now? But then there, there's Mark's face on the Jumbotron. And I'm like, hey, I'm pretty sure I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see me on it the Jumbotron. It was amazing. It's only because you said I was on. Uh, <laughs> doing a, a selfie thing and we was like oh that guy looks familiar and then my other half was like oh it's the guy sat in front of us yeah, it's and the guy the front, yeah. we'd looked it had gone off so yeah. yeah i missed myself on the screen <laughs> I am. Uh, I know. I know. For you, for you, Stu, this might not be the most entertaining of, of points in time. But um, one thing I have always been a mad fan of is Kiss Cam because I oh, always imagine that couple. That I know what you're gonna say. That couple. I always what? imagine that there is at least one couple who leave any situation that involves Kiss Cam no longer together, and we saw an absolute corker when the kiss cam came up and they were sat there and he was just like and they moved on and the woman's face it was like I'd be surprised if he makes it out of here alive let alone in a relationship I thought he was going to mention the guy that looked at his partner ready to kiss her and then looked at his Jags jersey and decided to kiss the badge instead um, something, something I would he like he wasn't to... very happy Something I would like to buy out of this part is the Jaguar emblem is not in a great place if you need to kiss it because it's not on the chest. It's like over here and, and people are like, oh, scared of right now. So <laughs> moving on from and the game, it was it was that. enjoyable to be able to walk out of there on the back of a Broncos win, go in as a, as a partial Broncos fan. Um, however, that's the point where the fun starts. Um, they said that there was 86,000 and something people, which is the highest attendance of any NFL. They Are they just referring to them as international now? Yes. So yeah. any yeah. NFL I think international they did say UK, game. UK, but I think it is international. Yeah. So, 86,000 people. And you need to get probably 
85% of them on the tube. The tube station is that way and we're here. So let's send 80,000 people, let's say, all in the same direction. And I, I said to Rob, I was like, this is the sort of stuff you forget from the last time you're here. That when the game finishes, you've got an hour, an hour and a half before you're technically out of Wembley Stadium because of how long it takes you to get down to the tube station. Now, the direction that I know that you and, and I were going, what's great about going in that direction is it's the opposite way to where every other person is going. So you literally walk to the platform, a tube turn, literally I walked down the stairs as a tube went that way and I went, damn it. And I turned and looked and another one was coming. Yeah. Like, well, no that is it. exceptional. And I got a seat on it. That tells you everything you need to know. We're going in the right direction. But it took me an hour and a half to get there. Mm. And it's essentially, what would you say, quarter of a mile? Yeah, probably not even that. I know there is another tube station. So my mates that were at the game... Um, they go to Wembley Central, which is I think the which is basically the other side of the ground, and they say that's a lot quieter. But for us living in the north, I've always packed at Stanmore for Wembley for all the NFL games, etc. Because it's literally the last tube stop. Then you're on the M1 and you're straight off. And like you've just said, the beauty of it is, 85 to 90 percent of them go to London. And the yep. rest, just turn left, have a nice quiet tube train and yep. go to Cannons Park and Stanmore. Yeah. So uh, once um, you get there, it's fine. But that quarter of a mile, yeah, yeah. it's uh, Yeah, it's, horrific. painful. it's horrifically painful to watch um, and be a part of. Um, obviously, um, I was just working on the principle that once I got to the car, everything would be amazing. And I got to the car and about 20 minutes after I'd got in the car... I phoned home to let um, to let everybody know that I was on my way. And I was like, I am about 10 yards from where I started. So one, even once I got to the car, it was like... And, and like getting out on the road, there was absolute carnage. I'd never seen more undertaking in my life than getting out onto like the... On the really? Motorway. Like people just shooting up the left, like like doing like 90 up the left. And you're like... This is gonna get real bad real fast. Um, obviously, once you get you know a few a few miles down the road, then it's like, well, let's let's settle into this one because we've got uh, we've got 196 miles of the 205 that I started with. So uh, <laughs> here we go. Um, anything else from you about about Sunday's game? Um, no, no, I think we covered everything. Lovely stuff. Okay, so we've. That, that's possibly, a, you know, the most in-depth ga single game review we've maybe had. But it's great that you guys got to go. I am very jealous because I've still not been live and in person. So I would, I would absolutely love to go. Well, I'm, I'm going to say it now. So it's, it's recorded history. I believe that next year, when all the games come round as a, as a collective, we should pick what, what we can all agree is the best of the bunch, and we should all go. <laughs> it was when when we went to sit down and there was a group behind us and I heard, well, you know, we've got 14 tickets, so this is probably us. Yeah, 10 of them were American. <laughs> when when me and Matt went to the baseball when they did the uh, the first of the London series there, was it the, Yan the Yankees and the Red Sox, we got sat and people had travelled over from the States front and behind us. It was like, well, this is strange. I suppose it made it more authentic, but... We saw mm. a lot of Broncos fans that were American that when we were coming out we, there hit, was a we lot, hit a lot of Broncos there was fans a lot of American, with an American people. accent. Yeah. So we should probably wrap us up with some uh, predictions for week nine coming sure, up. Sure shooting. Um so we shall we shall move on. Now I have been sent everybody's predictions ahead of time, including the predictions of the absent Mr. Paul Williams. And I've also got Max and myself. So technically that kind of gives the guest two shots. Two guess, chances sweet. for the guest. Every now and then it does happen and we we back that play. Okay, so um, we'll start. Eagles at the Texans. Everybody's clean swept on the Eagles. 
Chargers at the Falcons. Paul has gone for the Falcons whilst the rest of us think the Chargers are going to come off the bye and start laying the smack down to uh, quote a phrase I'm not overly keen on. Uh, the Dolphins at the Bears. Everyone's gone for the Finns to, to win. Despite last night's result, Everybody has gone for the Bengals to beat the Panthers. Everybody's gone for the Packers to beat the Lions. Everybody went for the Patriots to beat the Colts. Bills versus Jets. Everybody's gone Bills. Vikings, Commanders. Everyone's gone Vikings. Um... The Raiders Jags, we do have a difference of opinion as Mark is the only one brave slash Well no, I'm gonna say brave enough actually after the Raiders performance last weekend, but Mark has gone for the Jags to beat the Raiders, whereas Andy, myself and Paul have, have all gone the other way on that one. Andy and myself have picked the Seahawks to beat the Cardinals, whilst Paul and Mark have gone for the cards. Buccaneers uh, hosting the Rams I've gone for the Rams everyone else has gone Buccaneers everyone's all in on the Chiefs beating the Titans and Mark is on his own in thinking that the Saints are going to beat the Ravens so we do have quite a lot of predictions there um, but we have got some, we have got some the same we have got plenty varied so hopefully that will give us a, a clear cut winner um, on next week's Laces Out podcast. Um, we do have the issue of the side bet, which we alluded to earlier on, as, as Mr. Williams isn't here. Now, unbeknownst to Andy, Paul hasn't given me 35 different scenarios of if Andy picks X, I will pick Y. Paul, very stupidly perhaps, has just handed the picking responsibility over to me. And whatever whatever I pick will be Paul's selections for the side hustle this week. Um, so my first question, Andy, is, is this uh, is this just much... pure arrogance in the I've got a six point lead, do your worst? I'm I'm just wondering how much you're going to pay me. I'm going to pay you. Well, how much do you <laughs> want? <laughs> um, do you? Want to go straight into this? Do you need a second to compose yourself? Or no, I'm good? picking. I'm picking first on this bad boy, and okay. almost no surprises on where I'm going with my first pick. I would like the Philadelphia Eagles, please, to beat the one five and one Houston Texans all day, every day. Okay, so in snake format. It will be me to pick two teams now. Correct. Okay, I, I can't stitch them up entirely, so I'm I'm gonna go for the Bills to beat the Jets as pick one. Um, and I'm gonna go for the Chiefs to beat the Titans as pick two. So that would be your go. Um. Okay. Might might be considered a weird one. Who knows? Let's see how this one lands. The Miami Dolphins to beat the Chicago Bears. There's not a lot in it. However, we are looking 5-3 and three versus 3-5. Three and five, And I, I say it week in, week out. I am enjoying Dolphins football. Okay, got that one down. And your next one. I'm 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 tempted to play to. Uh, uh, I was going to go a little bit of a. Seen as he's in the room, you've got to give his team. Uh, um, however, <laughs> I'd like the Cincinnati Bengals coming off what was a painful game to watch. I I every now and then like to throw out. I don't think the Bengals lost. I think the Browns were on absolute fire in that game. So I am going to say the Bengals to beat the Panthers, please. Okay. So my last two picks then. Mm-hmm. Um, I will give Paul <laughs> Kirk Cousins and the Vikings to beat the Commanders. Um, I'm probably getting sworn at now, but I'm, 
but yeah, whatever. Uh, and this this is where it starts to get a little bit trickier for me. Um, but it's, surely it can't keep happening. So Packers versus Lions, I'll go Packers. Can you just remind me the four teams that you've now picked? So I've picked the Bills, the Chiefs, the Vikings and Green Bay. Um, you have selected so far Eagles, Dolphins, and Bengals. That's right. I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to double down on one of your picks. I would like the Baltimore Ravens to beat the New Orleans Saints. Possibly a controversial pick. I would all always shy away from picking against the Saints because they are uh, <clears throat> what was a very winning team. What is now a super unpredictable team. I imagine if they throw Taysom Hill into the mix, G bus. But I'm prepared to uh, die on that hill. Um, is that that? That is that. Those four picks are locked in. Uh, Paul will currently be probably swearing at me via the internet. No. Uh, he made uh, his, he he's made his bed. Sleep for next week now. Th- those are his picks. He let it happen. It is entirely his fault now if those four teams lose. He made so. his bed. Um, I will take the role of... Um, I don't know. Well, I don't know what to w- how to word it. Usual host, co-host, whatever... And thank you to gentlemen. Um, as we as we covered earlier, they are mighty big shoes to fill. But I certainly feel that you both came in hot and filled those shoes in a in a mighty way. So thank you to uh, Stu. Thank you to Mark for both coming and helping me you. take you lovely people through a sport from a different country. Join us next week. Paul might be here. Stu will be here. Because he is the official guest of next week's podcast. Um, But until then, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from these gentlemen. And uh, goodbye to you lovely people. Goodbye. Bye. So there you go, what do you think to that? Massive thanks to Stu. Massive thanks to Mark. Absolutely fantastic stuff. I think you'll agree. Got a bit long. But, you know, it was good content. Before you uh, before you run away, as if you had the ball and you were running downfield, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Drop any reviews you want to drop. Um, I found out today that the podcast is on Audible. The podcast is literally everywhere, people. Uh, you can check out our website, thecookiecast.com. There you can find social media links and an email button for you to get in touch with us. That's it for this one. Till next time, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to this awesome cookie cast.